So today we're doing a tour de toilet, going inside our fellow RVers rigs and ours to show you what kind of RV toilets we have, how they work, and the pros and cons of each. So stay tuned. Well, let's start here in our toilet in our Tiffin 35 QBA motorhome. Uh, this, as you can see, I have arm room for the toilet. Very happy about that. So we have a Thetford plastic toilet with the push pedal. It's probably among the most common type of RV toilet that you'll see out there. Uh, they're lightweight being plastic and that is why a lot of RV manufacturers use them is because it helps keep the weight down in the RV. So how it works is pretty simple. You just open the lid, if you're doing number ones, do what you need to do and then at the end just press the foot pedal down and that opens up the valve and the waste goes down into the tank, into the black tank. If you are upgrading to a number two, <laughs> then you push your foot down on the push pedal to fill the bowl with water. Do what you need to do and then push the pedal again to release everything down into the black tank and what we do like about this toilet is it's really easy to use it doesn't use an excess of water so when we're out dry camping or boondocking as we are right now we can monitor how much water goes into the tank and we can even save water from our shower and use that for helping with the flushing to reduce fresh water usage while we're boondocking some of the cons of this toilet is being plastic. It is not as easy to keep clean as a porcelain bowl. So that is definitely something that we wish was different and hopefully our next coach will have a porcelain bowl. But the great thing about these is they're inexpensive. We were able to change ours out when it stopped working. So instead of messing around with getting it repaired, it was pretty inexpensive just to get it replaced. That's one of the advantages. They're low cost so you can replace them if it stops working or you buy a used coach and you just want a fresh new toilet for yourself. Ours does not have the spray hose, so you will need to have like a toilet brush or something handy for that. So today, Carl and Olivia from Driving and Vibin are going to show us their composting toilet that they use inside their little vintage fiber stream camper. Let's check it out. So you know you're good friends with someone when they let you come into their RV and show you their toilet. So thank you, Carl and Olivia, for showing us your composting toilet. Why don't you tell everyone? what it's all about and how it works. Yeah, so with the composting toilet, it is completely waterless. There is no black tank or anything like that. And so what it does basically is separates the liquids from the solids. So there's this tank up front that collects all the liquids and then the compost is back here. So this isn't as intimidating to use as most people think. Basically, you just lift the lid and if you go number one, you can just go, it will divert down. And if you need to go number two, there is a little handle over here that will open the latch in the middle that goes to the compost and that's all there is to it and so what's inside this part here that composts the number twos okay so we use something called cocoa core which is coconut fibers that are dehydrated and it comes in a big block and basically you rehydrate that and it's just kind of like if you were going to do gardening with uh, like peat moss or anything like that and that's what you put in to kind of be as your base and over time heat and bacteria build up and start breaking everything down and it turns into compost so if you were stationary you could you know put that in your backyard and fertilize your plants with it or something like that or after the composting process is done you can drop it off right at the landfill so this can last us about a month when we're out boondocking and things like that we do use restrooms that are available to us when we stay at campgrounds or when we're out and about just to extend the stay as long as possible and that was a really good option for us because we wanted to primarily boondock and stay out in nature and with the seven and a half gallon black tank that came on this rig we would be staying a day a couple days at a time so this was really the best option for us in our space this is kind of a better option for folks that are in a much smaller space say a van or a class B or a smaller travel trailer like us who doesn't have a lot of tank capacity some of the cons are it is a process to clean and take out it's not a very hard process but you are going to have this top is on a hinge and it slides off and then you have to unscrew the the compost section from the floor and then you flip it over into like a household trash bag but then you're rehydrating the compost to put in your new batch so it is 
a bunch of things to consider. You do need to have a place to dump the urine tank to. You can dump that right in a toilet or something like that when you're out at a campground. You can even disperse it out in nature in many places as long as it's away from a water source. There's just a lot more to keep in mind than, I guess, hooking up a, a sewer hose and dumping your black tank like that. That's a pretty, pretty easy process and I do recommend with people with larger families and the tank capacity just to go ahead with the black tank. But if you're in a, a smaller scale rig like us, this does really help us out a lot, especially with boondocking. So some common questions we get are the most common is does it stink? And it actually doesn't. So because it separates the liquids and the solids, it does not ferment and create that horrible smell that we know as sewage smells like. So this actually, by the time it's done composting, it just smells like soil and dirt that you would garden with. So it's not at all offensive or obtrusive. There is a small fan that routes out to the outside to keep circulation going help the composting process and help whatever smells that could be in there but it is not bad at all. Hi I'm Eric and I'm Kayla and we're from liveandlight.net. Welcome to our 2015 Integra Aspire 45 foot motorhome. Uh, this is our home we've lived in it full time for about three years now. We've got two bathrooms in this coach or one and a half I should say but two toilets and they actually are very different toilets and we're gonna show you how they work. All right, so this is the bathroom. Me and Saki the cat share it. This is a Thetford foot flush toilet. It's pretty standard to just about any other Thetford foot flush toilet, with the exception of it is made out of porcelain, so it's just like a home toilet in that regard. Um, in terms of sort of basic usage, we all know how this part works. Not much uh, changes. With the, uh, with the top section. Uh, before you use it, you fill it with a bit of water. So you press the foot flush halfway and it will fill. And then you can use it, whatever you gotta do. Don't think anyone needs any help with that. And then when you're ready to flush it, you give it a full flush. One other nice thing about this toilet um, is it does come with a wand here which is a rinse wand. These foot flush toilets, one of the things that kind of a disadvantage of them is that the water doesn't really clean out the bowl very well, um, so they can lead to some odors. But this will allow you, when you're flushing, to give it a good rinse. What we like about this Thetford foot flush toilet is that it's very good on water consumption. You can basically, especially if you're boondocking, use as much or as little water as you want based on how much you want to fill it up. So very efficient toilet. Another thing we like about it is it's very uh, serviceable. There's not a lot going on. It's essentially a trap door that drops uh, everything into the tanks below it. So in that respect, it's very serviceable and just about any RV repair dealership can manage this toilet uh, and take care of any issues. In terms of things we don't like about the Thetford foot flush toilet, well, for me, it's a little small. Uh, the bowl's a little bit smaller than the toilet Kayla's going to show you that's in the back of our bus. So it's not as comfortable, at least for me. Uh, two, it's more complicated. you got to fill it with water. If you accidentally press the pedal too much, the water drains. And it's, just a, it's more than just pressing a button and almost having a residential uh, toilet like our other toilet, which Kayla will show you. Three, well, it's a trap door that's opening up the black tank below it. So when you flush it, any odors that are in the black tank might come up and it might make your bathroom smell a little bit. We don't really have a lot of problems with that because we keep our tank very clean, but it is something to consider. And then lastly, because the bowl itself doesn't use that much water, it doesn't necessarily clean itself that well in between every flush. So there's more maintenance required uh, to keep it clean. Uh, the, the small wand we have definitely does help with that, but it is also something that's just a little bit more of a hassle than our other toilet. Let me show you the bathroom in the back. In this bathroom, we have the Thetford Tecma, which is the automatic macerating toilet. This toilet works kind of just like a home toilet. Uh, there's water that's in it, and then there's a number one flush and a number two flush. So as you can see, press the button, and there it goes. Some of the 
the things that we like about this toilet is, is it's just like home. It's very comfortable. Um, you know, there's no kind of footstep fill filling and it's easy to flush and it's a macerator and it's also easy on the black tank because it's a macerator. And it also has a cool little light here that tells you how full the black tank is. So green, you're good to go. Yellow is in the middle. And then red means it's completely full. Now, some of the things that we don't like about this toilet is, one, it uses a lot of water. So if you say are boondocking and you wanna conserve water, uh, when you flush this toilet, it just uses the amount of water that it's supposed to use. You can't really regulate that or control that at all. Uh, the second thing is it has a lot of moving parts. So if it breaks, uh, I don't know what you do. <laughs> so uh, it could be really bad if right in between whatever you're doing, the toilet breaks and doesn't flush or whatever happens. So yeah, I don't know what to do when it breaks. And the third is um, also if you accidentally flush something that you're not supposed to. Uh, so if you put something in there and you flush it, since it macerates it up, it could be a really bad situation. Hi, I'm Lisa, and uh, today we're going to be talking about our toilet in our 2003 Monaco Windsor. We have a, uh, I believe it's a Thetford toilet. It's an aqua, and uh, this is what it looks like. Um, it is a porcelain toilet. It does have electricity, um, and there's two buttons here. The bottom one here, that adds water to the bowl. So you can hear the water being added there. Uh, it's a lot more powerful when you have uh, full hookups. We are currently in the desert, so that is not what we have. We're on our pump. So um, we add water here. Water's being added in there. Comes right around the bowl. And then to flush, we would hit the larger button there and it brings in automatically some additional water. Uh, what I like about this toilet is uh, it is more of a residential size. It is a porcelain toilet. It is much easier to keep clean and we like it. Um, it's a substantial uh, toilet. It's heavier than plastic. Uh, so it just was you know, cleans up nicely and is comfortable to use. I think it's, I think it's great, except that um, above our toilet, we have a vanity. Um, that's a very large hole at the bottom of RV toilets. And uh, I'm always afraid that we're going to drop something into it and it will disappear into the black tank, which would not be a fun retrieval. One pro or con, uh, depending on what you're doing, is what we're boondocking right now. So um, this is an electric toilet. We use the pump as well as the electricity. So that may not work for everybody. There is a feature also on this toilet. There is a switch in behind um, the mechanicals back here that does switch it to a residential style of toilet that the bowl will fill up automatically. Now we're boondocking so we don't have that feature on um, because we want to be able to control the amount of electricity and power that we're using during this time. I would recommend it. I, I really, I have had toilets that, uh, that are uh, plastic and have the pump um, and I really prefer this toilet uh, compared to that one. So yeah, it's great. We're here at Dan and Lisa's rig from Always on Liberty. Let's go check out their toilet. Let's go find Dan. Well, hello. <laughs> I think today we're going to talk a little bit about the toilet in our fifth wheel RV. <laughs> this is a Dometic 320, made of porcelain, not plastic. Plastic fails a little bit quicker. The porcelain's a little bit more like a household toilet. Comes with a handy sprayer for cleaning the inside of the toilet which we're not using when we're boondocking, we're going to go back and use the old standard for when we're in the desert. But when we're in the park and we're living high on the hog, we're going to use this fancy hand sprayer. Can do everything we need. The porcelain works really well. Has a nice foot pedal to flush it. We can even take the foot pedal. We can fill the bowl as full as we need to. Say you've been eating Mexican food all night. This is the best way to get rid of that product. 
Then we can do one, one big massive dump. But that's the Dometic 320. It's a little bit of an upgrade from the 310 version. You usually find it more of a high-end coach or a high-end fifth wheel. It does give you a nice homey feel when you're doing your business in the restroom. And uh, we really do enjoy it. Hey, my name is Michael. My name's Louise. And we're here in our little guy Tab Max S. And we are going to be talking about our wet bath. Come on in. Let's go down the rabbit hole here. Well, I'm going to explain to you today a little bit about a wet bath and how these things work. There are some advantages and disadvantages of this type of toilet. Uh, the advantages is it can fit into a small uh, trailer like this and you can go anywhere you want and you still have access to a shower as well as a toilet. Its size is only 24 by 36 so that can have some disadvantages especially for a big guy like me. For smaller people it's pretty good but one of the biggest disadvantages I have is trying to get up. Now maybe it's my age, I'm not sure, but there's no handles in here so you gotta kinda grab around the edge of the door and pull yourself up. So that might be a slight disadvantage. Now let me explain a wet bath first and that is that uh, you've got your feet in the shower the shower can come at you at any angle and this is going to get wet behind you when you take your shower. So the toilet itself though is quite a fascinating little brand. It's called a Thedford. It has a side pedal. So you fill up the basin before you do your business and then you flush. Easy as that. And the other side you have to be used to is on this one it's made space-wise so if you're right-handed it works now it's still okay left-handed but it is closer to the left-handed side and we keep our toilet paper up back here because there's no place for a roll in a wet bath i'm dennis burrell in west Indian in monaco 2016. Um, whenever you have a bath and a half you have to be able to move the solid waste and the liquid waste around the coach there's one way of doing it is to have two tanks one for each toilet and that's going to create two places to exit your solid waste or your black water and so um, most manufacturers uh, end up putting in a system that will allow the coach to have one tank and on this coach there's a system by Dometic and it has a vacuum generator and produces a vacuum and so right over here is the controls this is a simple on off switch and you can see the green light here coming on and off the green light says ready to flush and when you open the toilet up this is just like any other um looks like a toilet that you see over a tank because we still have a, a foot valve and a flush and when you flush uh you're going to hear it it's pretty loud because what happens is the vacuum draws the stuff down and it comes down and then it, it heads towards the vacuum generator and the, the, the vacuum generator has a two valve system that that pumps against one against the other and and collects all the stuff and pushes it towards the black tank you want you hold the pedal down three seconds because they want the water to come back in to help form the seal so that the vacuum can form so the water is helping the seal here we go you see the water coming in now you let it up it fills back up with water but it's running and if you notice the red lights on now saying the vacuum system's running and when it draws the complete vacuum it'll turn green again and you can see it takes quite a while there's a lot of pipe to pump down there you go how you did the, that's the full cycle there's two reasons i don't like the system one is how loud it is both when you flush it and the vacuum generator running so you can see it's pretty noisy and if it isn't insulated or put in the right place, now let's close the door again and show you. And so you can see, if it isn't insulated or put in the right place, it would be real disturbing to your neighbors. And that's a concern. So this one, we don't, we feel that's pretty quiet. But at two in the morning, you flush in the toilet. If you, you know, if you want to make sure that you've got one that your installation is, is protected from noise if you see the system in it. And the other reason is, is if any paper or anything happens to get stuck around that seal it'll hold a little bit of it open and the vacuum will start drawing the water through 
the, you'll hear the, the, the vacuum generator start again. And you have to go find out which toilet doesn't have water in it. And we find that if we hold it open and kind of clean the, se clean the seal just real quick and then re-release it, that it will generally hold when we do that. So those two reasons I don't like the system. Obviously the big plus is the stuff goes away and it goes into the single tank and you have one dump. The nice thing is it's a high-end toilet. It's porcelain and so you don't have any issues there at all. It's a, it's a regular toilet to take care of in every way, uh, just like a house toilet, except for the seal, of course. You can get in there, take this toilet all apart, and change that seal. And uh, they tell me at some years out I will have to change that seal. Okay, as a follow-up to the last video, I mentioned that every now and then the toilet would run and we'd have to just clean the uh, seal and then it would recover full-time use and everything else that I should maybe look at that. So it's about a one-hour job if you're fairly handy or a one-hour labor if you have to take it somewhere. So every two to three years you're going to have to change the seals and otherwise it starts running and leaking and won't hold the vacuum and it's like a brand new toilet right now. We can't believe the difference. We should have done it uh, as soon as it started to leak. Next time, as soon as it starts, I'm not even going to fool around with trying to clean the seal. I'm just going to order them and change them and make it go. So we wanted to add that to you for the information about the Dometic vacuum flush system. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Heath from Heath and Alyssa on YouTube, and I'm going to show you all our cassette toilet and just talk about some of the pros and cons of using this bad boy. So this is our cassette toilet and it's in a wet bath, um, pretty standard toilet. It does pivot because this wall actually comes in. It's actually pretty cool for the shower. Um, but this toilet itself is fine. The way it works is you basically, there's a level, there's a lever over here. So you just open it up and it slides open. So that's when you go to the restroom and all that stuff. You close it back to flush it. You just press this little guy over here, brings the water in there and just puts a little bit of water. Um, this lever right here uh, closes a latch on the cassette toilet, so it's typically closed. And the good thing about that is it keeps the smell inside the cassette toilet when we're driving and not using the toilet. If you open it up, that's when you can go put toilet paper and do your business in the bathroom. And so that's what the inside of the toilet is pretty standard. You can't really tell a big difference just from the inside, so let's go take a look at the outside. So the first thing that I noticed, obviously with the cassette toilet, is that it tucks in this compartment and it's a lot more invasive <laughs> into my life and my day than our normal toilet was in America. So in the US we had a standard uh, tank, so we hook up our big sewer hose. You don't actually have to look at anything. And so I realized as soon as we started with the cassette toilet, I was like, oh wow, you're much more intimate with your black tank. Well, not a black tank, but the cassette toilet. To get started with dumping the cassette, you just pull up this lever bring it out you got a nice little handle over here also if you have to walk a long distance which we have a few times basically is a little poop suitcase you just bring it along carry on no, I'm kidding <laughs> so to pick it up it's kind of a delicate act because you have this guy over here and you have a couple different kinds of tanks. Sometimes you have like bigger, wider ones like this. And so you can, if you're not as good at aiming, you can open up one of those guys. I try to go with this because I have to, I don't, I look at it less. You do have to flip it pretty quick. Otherwise a mess will occur. So we'll see how I can do today. For the sake of this video, we'll hope that we'll, my- We'll back up for the sake of the video. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> yeah. So, Here's where the magic happens. <laughs> Gross. All right, so now that I've dumped the tank, what I'll do is I'll take this water hose, I'll rinse it out, I'll shake it up a couple times. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Shake it up. Kind of helps with the smell and stuff and just get anything that's left. And again, now this is a video about toilets, so obviously we can talk about this stuff. It's like, it's kind of weird doing this because some of the dump stations have been pretty public. So I'm like next to a road and people are looking at me as I'm dumping our cassette toilet. So whatever, you get kind of used to it. I'll slide it back in after washing out a couple of times, uh, close it up. The lid, everything has to be closed and tucked away in there. Last thing I'll do is I'll go inside and I'll squirt some small good toilet deodorant in the toilet so that way it squishes around as we drive, helps the smell. So now that I've showed you how the cassette toilet works, you can infer your own judgment on whether or not you'd wanna do that every day, but I'll give you my quick kind of 
overall feedback from using it for a month. Quickly, the pros. The one thing I'll be say, since we're in the South Island of New Zealand and it's fall, it's been cold. The good thing about the cassette toilet is that we don't have to worry about it freezing because it's inside the RV, it's close to our heater. So like if we had our tank uh, hooked up in the US, it sometimes freeze, you have a giant poopsicle. We don't have to worry about that. So it's all four seasons. So that's actually been pretty good about the cassette toilet. That's pretty much the only pro that I can think of at the moment. The things I don't like, you have, we have to dump it every single day. It's our primary toilet, we're always on the move. We use this toilet most of the time. So if we're using it as our primary toilet, we dump every day. Fortunately, there's a lot of dump stations in New Zealand, but we do have to dump it a lot more than we had to dump our, our black tank in the US. So that's one thing to consider is frequency of dumping. Another thing is like, just be, you're way more close, up close and personal with um, your tank. I mean, everything that you ate the day before, you're getting to see again. Is that not a bad thing? Ew! <laughs> So another thing to consider with the with the cassette toilet is that you're just a lot more up close and personal. I mean, you're right next to your tank having to dump it. So those are a couple of the things that I'm not in love with. It's just like you have to smell. And when we have our regular black tank in the US, it's like you just hook it up, kind of forget it. You don't actually have to see anything. Um, but it is pretty quick and easy to do. Like this setup, now that I've done it, it takes maybe a couple minutes each time. So I would say that that's another thing that is not incredibly bad about the cassette toilet. So. Hope that was helpful, Mark and Julie. Um, that's all I have to say about the cassette toilet. Well, we hope you enjoyed our tour de toilet today. Thank you everyone for opening up your bathrooms and your toilets to show everybody. That is not the kind of thing that most people are willing to do. So thank you for all being a part of that and thank you for watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment and share, and we will see you next time. Thanks for being part of our toilet talk today on oh. We Love TV. <laughs> You, Julie. I bet you're so excited to show people your toilet. Here it is. Yes, that's right. Now we want to video you using it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm like, I'm open the hatch so you can see inside. No, no, no. Your business in the bathroom. Do your business. Do that business. Do you want to say that all again? No, it's fine. Say you've been eating Mexican food all night? This is the best way to get rid of that product. Well, thank you. We know that's a very intimate thing for you to show people. Happy to do it. I wouldn't not buy a coach because I had this system. There's other systems, but I don't know the pluses or minuses of them. I'm looking forward to seeing this whole video so I can learn. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to get a reputation for this that I'm never, ever going to shake off.